Next, we shift forward almost 10 years to the 2002 Night of Champions, where Marcus Rule showed up as the freak of all freaks. The lighting at this event was insane, and that certainly helped, but make no mistake about it, Marcus was ripped and monstrously huge, and it was a scary sight indeed. To my mind, no other bodybuilder has ever quite epitomized that comic book villain look like Rule did here. I grew up watching the 90s Spider-Man cartoon, and if anyone was to play a real-life version of Venom or Rhino, Rule would be the one to do it. It's almost as though he was able to transform every pose he hit into some variation of a most muscular. That side chest could pass for a twisting hands clasp shot, and his front lat spread, which we'll see in a moment, looks surprisingly similar to a hands-on hip. Now, while it's true that a 2002 Marcus Rule certainly didn't have the same impact as the others on this list, his appearance here was probably just as awe-inspiring in retrospect, when taken on its own merits at least. Roughly a year later, Ronnie Coleman would shock the world yet again at the 2003 Mr. Olympia. And we're going to have to go with pictures on this one, unfortunately, because the available video footage is terrible and doesn't do him justice at all. Because Ronnie came in bigger than ever here and just obliterated the competition. I've said it before and I'll say it again that probably no other bodybuilder, past or present, could hope to defeat this version of Big Ron. It wasn't his prettiest shape, granted, but this combination of size and conditioning would be almost impossible to beat, especially from the back where he was virtually invincible, with those thick hanging lats and the ridiculously striated glutes and hamstrings. Ronnie looked like an alien here, and just like Dorian ten years prior, he took things to a whole new level and continued to push the envelope of what was humanly possible. Jay Cutler in 2009 was another one for the ages. It wasn't just that he completed the comeback, becoming the first man in history to reclaim the Olympia title after losing it, it was the dominating fashion in which he did so. Love him or hate him, nobody who truly understands bodybuilding can seriously question his win here. This technically wasn't the biggest Jay we'd ever seen, but it was definitely his driest conditioning. Jay had never looked this tight from the back before, and it was here at this show that he imprinted perhaps the single most defining image of his career with this incredible signature quad stomp. I know people will continue to go back and forth between this year and 2001, but for me, the added muscle maturity and superb conditioning makes 2009 the best version of Jay Cutler bar none, and easily one of the most impressive Olympia performances of all time. And last, but certainly not least, we come to Phil Heath in 2011. This was one year I think pretty much everyone would agree that Phil deserved the Sandow. His conditioning was off the charts with those deep cuts and separation, and this true HD footage highlights it perfectly. Though the angle's slightly off, that's actually beneficial in a way because it showcases the depth and thickness he carried even back then at the very beginning of his reign. In some ways, Phil was a step backwards because he wasn't as massive as previous champs like Ronnie or Jay. He lacked their large wide frames, and his narrow upper body structure would continue to be his biggest weakness throughout his career. But in other ways, this marked a step in the right direction and a return to form for professional bodybuilding. In 2011, Phil Heath brought back 90s level conditioning and aesthetic proportions with supremely full muscle bellies reminiscent of Kevin Lavroni and Flex Wheeler. It was truly an awesome spectacle and one of my favorite Mr. Olympia physiques of all time. And while he was arguably even better in 2013, there can be no debate that this first win had the greater lasting impact because it introduced us to a new breed of champion. Okay guys, so that's all for this one. Just wanted to revisit some of these incredible performances in case you'd forgotten or weren't around at the time. And just to clarify, I'm not saying that these five are my personal favorites, but there's no denying that they are some of the most mind-blowing physiques to have ever stepped foot on stage. So thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe for more if you haven't already. And until next time, this has been The Tominator signing off, and I'll be back!